Hi, thanks everybody for joining. We will talk about end-to-end -end test automation for both horizontal and vertical scale. I started my career as software developer. 2006 discovered test automation and decided to be a test engineer. 2010 test lead at Defense Technologies and Engineering and I'm working test lead at Innova in telecommunication sector. Today's agenda, end-to-end -end test automation with subtopics of definition, improvements, vertical and horizontal scale, prerequisites, advantages of each test levels, and both scales. Test automation strategy, approach, how to form criteria, principles, key factors for a successful strategy, gains. ETU test automation experiences, return of investment, the problems faced in the process, need for both manual and automated testing. Machines are great for running repetitive and straightforward scenarios that don't require any intelligence or experience. So we are trying to take advantage of this opportunity by automating our tests. End-to-end -end test automation is verifying that all units of an application and all subsystems of a system interact as expected with each other, that the system as a whole works as intended. Automating tests in this style is called end-to-end -end test automation in great literature, especially it's called horizontal ETU test automation. This is the famous ideal software test automation pyramid. A unit is defined as the smallest testable part of an application. Each test case is independent from the others. Integration testing tests, integration or interfaces between components, systems or hardware. UI test is also called acceptance test, means testing from the user perspective and validating requirements, user stories. At the top, some limited, limited manual testing activity is advised. It's okay that automating whole unit integration and UI levels is great. Can we improve it? Firstly, we can replace manual tests with exploratory tests, which is an approach, not a technique, and more productive than scripted testing, more traceable than ad hoc testing. We can add one more layer to the bottom, test data preparation automation layer. We can add continuous integration that we can execute test automation projects automatically. Why we are adding test data preparation layer as an extra layer? Answer is again a question. Instead of doing in extra level, you can also do it using teardown method encoding phase. Sometimes applying teardown method as hard coded in your test automation code is okay. But we can ask the question that, is it the best approach that we can apply it all the time? All pro in all projects. A good automation architect ensures that scripts are reusable. A great automation architect ensures that scripts and test data both are reusable. Have a look at the four steps of test automation. Note that teardown is the fourth step. Setup phase of the test establishes the prior state of the test. The exercise phase is where we execute our test actions. In the verify phase, we specify and verify the expected outcome. The final phase is teardown. It's all about housekeeping and we clean up the test environment and put the world back into the state in which we found it. 
if we want to synchronize with behavior driven developments given when then logic setup means given exercise mean when and verify means then this is the ideal scenario that integrated systems are up and ready for testing but sometimes they are not ready and when they are not ready we should prepare mock objects to emulate real systems so we can test our system and integration in earlier phase without waiting other systems to be ready when we use mock objects setup works on mock object mock, mock object fits sut and verification is done over mock object advantages of automating test data preparation phase faster coding faster test executions clean test environment testing with real and more complex test data you lose coupling between data and code layers facilitates testing for multiple customers it's useful for especially as you is a middleware or you have different test environments that you should run your tests for example if you have five customers and these customers have different test environments different databases is the best solution so we were able to automate the entire vertical ETU testing unit integration UI plus test data preparation levels can we improve it further here is the vertical ETU implementing tests on all levels of the pyramid and here is the horizontal ETU means writing longest path, path of your test cases and automating longest path from the user perspective for example login add to chart checkout and pay scenario the starting point is login and ending point is pay one end is login and the other end is pay there are two different views on this topic one says writing tests independent and losing test cases from each other is better and the other says writing dependent scenarios from the end user perspective is better both of them have some advantages and disadvantages that we will have a look this again on following slides tools can be changed based on the needs these are the ones we preferred prerequisites of horizontal ETU tests if they are not even mockable you cannot perform horizontal ETU tests all systems and subsystems test environments should be ready if they are not ready you should mock them if they are not mockable you cannot perform horizontal ETU tests prerequisites of vertical ETU tests having a supporting test development strategy like TDD BDD continuous testing and it should be driven by all stakeholders business analyst developer tester project manager test leader in project advantage of horizontal ETU tests covers high business uh, high business logic coverage testing from the user perspective prevents production incidents and gives the confidence that everything is okay advantages of vertical ETU tests high code coverage fast execution more determined and focused tests useful for especially safety critical softwares if you have software running on plane or helicopter and you are using the 178b standard your coverage should be 100 percent so this is the ideal scenario ideal solution let's have a look at the advantages and disadvantages based on the test types if you want to 
cover business logic with your tests, UI test automation is the right choice. If code coverage is more important, then you should perform unit, unit test automation in first order. And for the short execution time and low costs, you can prefer unit tests. Which projects test strategy should be designed as end-to-end? -end? And can all tests be written as end-to-end? -end? It cannot be used in all projects. It should be applied only for the proper ones. We will have a look how can we know and decide our project is proper for E2E. An alternate test automation approach, continuous testing, to develop software within shorter delivery cycles, agile, DevOps, and continuous delivery approaches are on the forefront. And continuous delivery supports continuous testing, which is a testing strategy that consists of a large number of automated unit tests and acceptance tests, but a small number of automated ETU tests. Uh, this ETU means horizontal ETU. Continuous testing claims that ETU tests are insufficient and they should be limited. It's a means of using vertical ETU test automation effectively, but avoiding horizontal ETU test automation. It claims that ETU GUI automation is always tougher than the other types, so you should prefer the other types. This methodology says in this way. Which test automation strategy is the best? There isn't one absolute strategy that is valid for every SUT. Criteria and principles to form test strategy. You should select the test type that your staff is strong or you should be confident to be able to train them. For the coverage strategy, strategy you should make a choice between business logic coverage or code coverage. For the execution time, you should determine your priorities and limits. Cost, you should Evaluate your human resources situation that will work for the automation. It's not an obligation to select and implement a strategy strictly. You can mix the approach and form your own strategy based on your needs. It's about finding the right balance. These are the steps you should consider to form an automation strategy. Firstly, Assess your test and process maturity. Determine and implement test tool strategy. Choose your test delivery model. Establish test management strategy. Establish test measurement strategy and metrics. Manage test releases effectively. In a nutshell, we should work on following topics and the most important one is the first one. Evaluate project, staff, and company culture. That is an important and also trendy topic in test automation world is that you should consider the two W's of automated testing, when and what. Many organizations see software test automation as a solution to decrease testing costs and cycle time in software development. However, establishment of automated testing may fail if test automation is not applied in the right time, right context, and with the proper approach. Evaluate tools and methodologies. Consider project dynamics. Your development team have third-party components that are being used by development team. 
Consider them. Behavior driven development (TDD). Consider your approach methodologies. Form the automation strategy planning and designing phase. Automating without good test design may result in a lot of activity but little value. So consider reusability and modularity. Test and maintain, evaluate defect cause analysis with cause effect analysis. Based on delivery strategy, automated test executions should be planned and clear CI roadmap should be outlined based on your needs. Let's design a CI delivery strategy for executions of automated tests. Firstly, we should work on our criteria. The, va the values written next criteria, delivery velocity and test risk level, are complete fictitious values that I wrote. Normally, we should form up them based on our needs and project dynamics. Here is, as an example, our delivery velocity should be fast. So, smoke unit test first, smoke UI test second, full test automation set, last after deployment in order. Test risk level is medium for us now. Smoke tests for all test types run before deployment, but it is risky to run full sets after deployment since bugs could stay undetected. That we are accepting this here. And we formed up our test execution and delivery strategy. Automation means running fewer tests more often. So you have to start small by attacking your build acceptance test first, then cover your smoke tests, then move on to your time taking full time set, uh, full sets of tests. Here in this design, the critical question is where you put these automated tests before or after deployment. Here, development, developer team checks in code to the version control system, then it triggers our automatic tests. tests. Uh, continuous integration system triggers the automatic tests. The first one is build and unit test automation. It should be maximum of 60 seconds. And it's better to be 10 seconds, 30 seconds. And then if it's, it passes, move on to the UI test automation, the smoke one. It should be done and finished in maximum of 10 minutes. Because we said that the velocity is important for us. And then if it is successful, that test is successful. We deploy the we deploy to the production environment. Then to test the critical pads means smoke test. Again, in production environment, we run our UI test automation smoke one again. And then if it is it pass, UI test automation, full set of UI test automation can be run and it can be one hour, two hour, three hour, three hour. And then monitoring. Plus, you can run automated test runs after nightly build, the red ones, unit test automation, web service test automation, UI test automation full set and cross browser platform tests automated test runs after weekly build automated non functional tests performance load tests and static code analysis to strengthen 
the automation process, behavior driven, you can get help from approach, and one of them is behavior driven development. What it brings us, communication, collaboration, automation, and living documentation drives whole project team, health test bases and requirements, replaces scripted test with automation scripts. With behavior and develop BDD, most problematic part of the software development life cycles is requirements that you prepare the requirements with business analysts, developers, and testers all together. So the maturity of requirements is better and it reflects all the software development life cycle in a better way. The given, uh, given when then logic of BDD, the given, given part describes the prerequisites when part describes the action and final the then part is verifying part. Benefits of ETU test automation, velocity, faster bug finding and fixation process. It means reducing cycle time for software development. Stability, we have more stable and robust products, you became more confident before deployment to production environment. Efficiency, we can test more with less effort. All these three bullets means saving money. We have seven active projects, tests that are being automated as ETUE. All these projects executed in telecommunication sector, telecommunication projects, and to end test automation scenarios, the count, number, manual test execution time, automation execution time, and ratio of savings, you can see. Legalite low automation project works on cloud. It's being automated from the starting point to now, and the coverage ratio is 80% of coverage it has. Another example we can talk that TTC's project. In TTC's project, the fourth one, we experienced different kind of FAT, factor acceptance test, in this project, test automation coverage is a hundred percentage. A FAT would normally be performed in two weeks with the customer by running all scenarios manually. But we showed them our automated tests and then we executed automated tests instead of manual tests for a FAT. A FAT was done in three hours instead of two weeks at the end, customer appreciated us and we had the reputation of doing the right product and our approach of running the automated tests with less effort in less time. Challenges and problems faced in the process. Technical stuff you should prepare and train your staff for the tools you select. It sometimes means training them, but also sometimes mentoring and motivating them and taking care of their problems. Tools, sometimes it's hard to find or buy the proper tool for the project. You might select hybrid solutions and use multiple tools like using Selenium WebDriver as main tool and sometimes get help from Sickly to automate the components and objects hard to catch with object-based test automation tools like Selenium or JEP.
our testing in agile organization structure consists of 14 test engineers working working in eight projects they work generally with the pm daily assignments are made by pms i determine the test strategy for the technical test works with the test team Testing cost, testing accounts for roughly 26% of IT budgets. But lack of testing is even more costly. The global cost of locating and removing bugs from software has risen to 3 and 12 billion annually and it makes up half of the development time of the average project. Sometimes it's not easy to understand the impact of the testing over product quality and SDLC. It's a good example. Trying to find defects on system under test using human intelligence or experience is manual testing and cannot be replaced with automated testing. If your project is not suitable for automating all tests with full coverage, then, so then somewhere you will need the experience and intelligence of your test engineers. We performed bug fest testing activity. Here, our aim was testing the application from end to end manually across different projects. Normally, tes testers works on, work on their daily tasks, generally testing a specific development or bug fix task. But after we discovered that when we put a different tester on a project, new tester could find some bug bugs on the system. So we changed the testers in projects. And that's a one month period. We check the bugs in systems from end to end, not only by tasks, new tasks. So support your team by moving testers across teams and a little bit of fun. Fun part is here at the end of bug fest, we performed a team facility, playing table surprise gifts, coffee and free time. Here are my references. Thank you very much for listening. I can take questions now and also you can ask whenever you want for, by mail or LinkedIn.